We'll talk about the order of operations, and for that you may have heard parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, PEMDAS. Um, in this order, sometimes people confuse things and think that multiplication is always before division and addition is always before subtraction, but that's not true. So it's really parentheses, and then second, exponents, and then third, multiplication and division kind of together. If I could say both words at the same time, I would, but it's multiplication and division from left to right. And then finally, fourth, it's additions and subtractions. They, again, addition and subtraction, just like multiplication and division, have the same precedence. Uh, it's additions and subtractions from left to right. So for instance, so let's let's take a look at this, right? So what does it mean that additions and subtractions should be done from left to right? For example, let's look at this question. Simplify 9 minus 2 plus 4. It is incorrect to focus on the 2 plus 4 first and simplify that to a 6 and then have 9 minus 6, which would become 3. This is incorrect. Um, this is focusing on addition before subtraction. But in this case, we what's correct to do here is we need to do the subtraction before the addition because the subtraction appears first when you scan from left to right. So 9 minus 2 simplified to 7. There's still the plus 4, uh, which we account for in, um, so that this equals really uh, is valid. And then 7 plus 4 simplifies to 11. Let's take a look at this. Simplify 7 plus 50 divided by 5 times 2. Here again, um, focus on divisions and multiplications. I sh yeah, that's actually good to say these in the other order, divisions and multiplications from left to right. The addition would come after all that mess. So first we do this division right here. That's amongst, um, so yeah, additions late is gonna happen late, but amongst divisions and multiplications, the divisions on the left. So here you see what's done incorrectly. Instead, we need to focus on the division first so that 50 divided by five simplified to 10. And then here we do the multiplication before the addition. So 10 times two became 20. There's still this seven plus, which needed to be written so that this equal sign was really actually valid. Seven plus 20 is equal to 27. So just to clarify, if division is to the left of multiplication, then division comes first. Perform multiplication before addition, regardless of which is to the left. To get addition performed before multiplication does, you need to draw parentheses. For instance, 7 plus 10 in parentheses times 2, that will make the addition happen first. Now, with a word on parentheses, um, the same thought process needs, needs to apply. The same thought process should apply whether you have numbers or variables. In 2 plus 3 times 4, multiplication is first. In 2 plus 3 in parentheses times 4, addition is first. So in the same way, I try to write this right below, in x plus y times z, multiplication is first, and in x plus y in parentheses times z, addition is first. In a minus b divided by c, division is first, and in a minus in parentheses b divided by c, look, division is still first, so nothing changed there, right? The, the point is, if you start, start with a minus b divided by c, start with this right here, um, inserting parentheses, around the b divided by c to have a minus, and then in parentheses b divided by c, as we saw up here, didn't change the, the order that the operations are performed in. Um, and if you go in reverse, if you start with this here, this a minus b divided by c, removing the parentheses to have a minus b divided by c with no more parentheses, did not change the order that the operations are performed in. So both of these, um, think of b divided by c as a number, you do that first, and then whatever that is, you do a minus that number. Right? That's how to think of both of these things. This is really testing how the order of operations truly work if you don't have numbers to plug in. For example, if we had r plus s times t minus u, what should we think? How should we interpret what this says? Um, we can't keep simplifying it because we don't have numbers to plug in for these four variables, but we should still process what this means by saying first, s times t, the multiplication has to happen before the additions or subtractions, s times t simplifies to some number. Whatever number that is, what you do next is you do r plus that number. And now you have a new number. And you take that new number, and then you subtract u from that. If two expressions differ only in the assertion, insertion or removal of a set of parentheses, uh, we should be able to determine if the two expressions are equal or not. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Now, 
here's how not to think about it. Sometimes what students want to think about is the distributive law, what distributes and what doesn't. So when looking at x times quantity y squared plus z and looking at uh, x times y squared plus z with no parentheses, sometimes people want to think about, oh, in the first one, x distributes, and in the second one, x doesn't. Now, that is true, but that thought process only works on some problems, and on other problems, this thought process isn't going to work. So instead, what's going to be more sustainable is to think about what the order of operations would say. So here's how to think about it. I know this process is a little strange. Um, the ex explanation looks kind of long here. Sorry about that. But it's because this is a new way of thinking about things. It's a more sustainable approach. So let's take a look at these two expressions. In the first one, in x times quantity y squared plus z, we have to focus on what's in parentheses first, right? So in, in y squared plus z, the exponentiation happens first. That is, the y squared happens first. So whatever y squared is, we add z to that. Finally, the result of that is multiplied by x. That's what the first expression is, the one with the parentheses. The second expression doesn't have parentheses. It's x times y squared plus z. Let's read what happens using the order of operations. Well, same deal here. The exponentiation happens first. y squared happens first. Then take the result of that. That is multiplied by x following the order of operations. Then the result of that, whatever number that is, that is added to z. So the two expressions are different. So take a look at, on the next slide, uh, these expressions. And the first thing to think about, actually, is what is the last operation that occurs in each of these? So in the first expression, addition happens last. Um, in, the, in the second expression, uh, you have multiplication showing up, and you have addition in 3 plus 4 times 5. So it's the addition that occurs last. So take a look at these examples. It's important to think through what operation occurs last because then you can then talk about this key activity here on the next slide, which is you have two expressions. So you have a pair of expressions, uh, like for instance, in part one, you have here 3x plus 5 and then 3 times in parentheses x plus 5. And you should think about, now each of these, notice it's just the insertion or removal of parentheses to get from one to the other. And you should ask yourself, are these expressions equivalent? Are they equal or not? N notice these are so similar, but it's, 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 it's not good to think about what distributes and what doesn't, because we haven't really talked about the distributive law, and we will, in careful detail, um, note that not everything distributes. It'll actually be way more sustainable and be helpful for the things we are doing throughout the semester if you think about what the order of operations says. So for instance, the first one, I'll walk through this. It's take 3 and take x, whatever x is, we don't know, but you take 3 and x and multiply those together first due to the, the order of operations and take that result and then add 5. The second one is, well, we've got to focus in parentheses. So we take whatever x is and then add 5 to it. That's a new number. And take the result of that and you multiply 3 by it, right? So these two expressions, 3x plus 5 and 3 times quantity x plus 5, they will actually be different numbers. That's the way to process and think through. Um, so there's a set of solutions here for you. The order of operations are really key. Uh, we need to be very clear about how we're writing. And so I'm going to say this as an expectation and a habit that I'd like you to form. Um, I, I expect you to always read using the order of operations. You might read a problem differently than I intended. And you might be doing a, a way different problem. And it might be a lot harder. And you don't want to do that. Um, and then always write what you mean using the order of operations because I will always read your writing using the order of operations.